Welcome to Tin Talks, real conversations with champions for champions. I'm your host, Emily Love. And I'm Carlette Patterson, your head sports life coach. And the desired outcome of our Real Conversations for Champions with Champions is to share our passion for sports life coaching. We want to get you coached and our purpose for training you for a life that you love is we want to connect you to what matters to you in your life and the power of being a champion in your own life. A champion life is a 10 life. Hi team. Many people recognize Thomas Edison as the greatest American inventor ever. His inventions came to change the world, but it wasn't an easy or immediate process. When a reporter asked Edison, how did it feel to fail a thousand times? Edison replied, I didn't fail a thousand times. The light bulb was an invention with a thousand steps. Edison's story is an example of how one man's dedication to leaning into the change process can literally impact the whole world. This week on 10 Talks, our desired outcome is to talk about change. Here to join us for a conversation is Dr. James Pipe. Dr. Pipe works at the Mayo Clinic. He is the inventor of Propeller, a common method to reduce blurring from patient motion during an MRI exam. The goal of Dr. Pipe's research is to collaboratively address the global economic challenges of healthcare, along with the desire for improved patient experience by exploring and promoting the use of MRI to get patients to the right treatments for the best outcome in the least amount of time. That is a mouthful. Dr. Pipe, welcome to the show. Carlette, we are ready to get coached and dive into our conversation with the champion. Well, team, time to go into the life gym, and what an honor to have Dr. Pipe with us today, and just very excited about talking about his desired outcome of getting the best outcome in the least amount of time, and whether that's medically or physically, emotionally, spiritually, whatever we're going for, I think this is relevant in terms of setting us up for that change model, because if we want to go from good to great, we've got to do something different. And if we want a different result, we've got to show up and do and be different. And Dr. Pipe is a perfect example of that. And we're honored to talk with him today. So welcome, Dr. Pipe. Tell us a little bit about your journey to Mayo and just what got you into this mode of being an inventor and a researcher. Thanks, Carlette. It's great to be with you. Um, So I've been in this field for maybe 30 years now. Um, I I got into it uh, early on because I, I thought... Um, this whole field of medical imaging was just a great way to combine the engineering things that I love with just a real sense of purpose behind what I do. So uh, I was, uh, I've been at a few different locations, mostly working in, in hospital environments, but we've worked on, on imaging anatomy, blood flow, a lot of different things with MRI. Um, and then uh, as Emily mentioned about 15 years ago, we, we came across a way that uh, with MRI, we can track how a patient moves um, during an exam and we can correct for that so to make the images a lot better when the patient is in the scanner and feeling nervous. Um, we still get them a high level of care. So that was a great thing for me. And I, it really kind of uh, drove me even further, I think, towards in, in making sure that my inventions were really impacting patient care. Um, and then, it, it, interesting, the process of getting here to where we are now, back in 2007, there was a very famous uh, physician here at Mayo Clinic who was talking uh, at one of our sessions. And uh, I don't even remember what he talked about, but in the Q&A session afterwards, so he just made a comment, and in, in paraphrasing it, he said, you know, we think about MRI exams as in the U.S. as a 45-minute $4,000 exam. And this was all kind of in the context of the, the rising cost of healthcare. He said, but what if we rethought, what if we changed that completely? What if we thought about MR as a one minute $50 exam? How would that change how MR gets used? And I just found this really intriguing. And, and I can point to that comment as, as a real pivot for the work that we've done. So we started looking at well, how fast can we go with MR? And what are the things that are limiting us in, in that way? Um, so we started working on a variety of things. We work on something called spiral MR, which is really f- uh, a fast way to do it, but it requires a lot of engineering steps to, to make it work well. 
we've been um, on this journey for several years now. And I was at a different institution um, for the last 20 years. And then a couple of years ago, uh, that same that same physician who made that comment, uh, he and I were at a meeting and I was talking about um, having an interest in broadening the scope of what I do. And that led to a conversation where I ended up coming here to uh, Mayo Clinic. Uh, I'm now sitting just a few doors away from him on the same hallway, which is just a lot of fun. Um, and a really big team working on how we can take the stuff that we do with MR and really impact clinical care. Dr. Pipe, that is a fascinating story. And team, what I want to talk about from just the the adventure of Dr. Pipe and how he started an invention and got to be sitting next to the guy that really challenged him is our change model. And our change model is based on having new thinking, new skills, and new hope. And just know that it doesn't matter what order those three show up in. We just want to make sure that if you have a desire to change, we've got to have new thinking, new skills, and new hope. So let's just watch the film of what Dr. Pipe talked about in terms of the new thinking was he accepted that challenge when he showed up at a conference and was engaged in the Q&A and heard this simple statement that led to a great challenge. That would be an example of new thinking. The new skills is actually taking that new thinking and putting it into practice what can I do day in and day out that actually builds up my, my brain, my body, my, my everything to really be able to take that new thinking and bring it into my reality? And that's what he's doing with his team at Mayo constantly. Every detail counts. All information matters. Really working on that new skill component, which gives all of us new hope that there actually can be a different way to do things. So really watching that, every time you go to say the word, I want to change, I want you to anchor in, where's my new thinking? What are the new skills that I'm committed to practicing? And do I have new hope so that I can get up every day and practice, practice, practice? And I want you to hear from Dr. Pipe's story, really the value of, number one, he showed up. And number two, he asked for what he wanted. So he was interested from that new thinking on, wow, that's interesting. And then he took the next step and had the courage to really go for what interests him and what he had a passion for. I love his statement about what can I do that I really take what I love, combined it with my purpose, and that equals great change for both him and for our world. So for that, we're incredibly grateful. So Dr. Pipe, when you think about the things that you watch your film and you see where you've had to really manage change, struggle through change. Talk to us a little bit about how you've done that. Um, it involves a lot of patience, um, of course. Um, I think that uh, there's a lot of, uh, so I work with a big team of people. Um, so a lot of how we've managed change is just um, really getting the message across to my team. So we talk, of course, a lot of what we do is very technical and there's a lot of math and engineering that goes into it. But I try to also weave in a lot of discussion about why we do this, um, really keep our focus on 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 the impact that we want to have in the end. You know, there are um, a lot of inventions in our field that are really academically brilliant, but sometimes they're not so applicable uh, in in practice because they're solving the wrong thing or they're just not reliable or useful. So we, we really try to understand what is it that we're trying to do and who's going to be using this invention and, and what's the manner in which they're going to be using it. So if you come up with something that um, will work uh, with graduate students working in a, in a laboratory, that doesn't necessarily mean it's going to work in the, in the really hectic and really charged atmosphere inside of a hospital. So you have to think about the whole picture, just not not the things you're doing, but but really how is this going to fit into a larger goal? And I think for us, that has made a big difference um, on, on in, uh, increasing the impact of what we do. Um, I can say one other thing, and, and, and that is uh, for our field, at least, a, a big part of, of of the story is is getting 
things from the academic site into the into practice. And a lot of that involves working with vendors and the manufacturers of MR scanners. So I have also, throughout my career, had the privilege of working with uh, many of the different vendor manufacturers. And that involves a lot of um, extra time, just spending time with the people going. So right now I work with Philips Healthcare in the Netherlands, but I've worked with other vendors too. So it involves uh, time to go over to their site, to, to learn their challenges and how to bring innovation to the marketplace, um, how to get FDA approval for things, you know, how to make sure things just don't work 90% of the time, but that they work 99.9% .9 of the time. And, and again, it's this holistic picture that I think has been crucial for us to, to really drive things forward. Team, I have a question in regards to change, and um, Dr. Pipe would love to hear your thoughts as it relates even just to Edison and the way that he kind of managed change in that, you know, a thousand step process to the light bulb. I think one of the performance barriers to change for a lot of people is the discouragement of problems that come up. You know, you take a step forward to change, but then you're you know, faced with five obstacles and then people are like, that's it. I just, I give up, I quit. But we can see in Edison's story and in yours, Dr. Pipe, that quitting really, it can't be an option um, to invent something new. So will you talk to me about that? How can you relate to Edison and sort of what are your steps as you start to start the process of trying to invent something and not let the performance barriers get in the way of you really coming up with something that's changing people's lives? Sure. Well, let me talk about the barriers and the setback. So I, we certainly have a lot of those. Um, and, and honestly, I think most of the time setbacks for us, setbacks involve learning why something doesn't work. So if, if we get, if we, if we create something and it doesn't work, we try really try hard to understand why that is. And for us, that's a learning process just in itself. And that's an important part of getting to the final solution. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I have a, a friend, a colleague who's a professor at a university, and, and he says a lot of times students will come to him and they're, you know, they're hoping to get an answer from him, but they'll say something like, I made this thing and it works when I do this, but it doesn't work when I do something else. And he says he has a simple reply and he just says, congratulations, now you have a bounded problem. So he says, keep working on narrowing those boundaries and eventually you'll find your answer. So I think that's a great way to just teach students to keep at it. Um, I, I can say one other thing too, and, and this is something I continually work at. Um, it's slowly getting better maybe, but when you really invest yourself in something and you are trying really hard, you spend a lot of your time and en energy to, to trying to solve a problem. It's a real trick and, and it's something that I continue to try to learn that you have to separate your emotional investment in this solution from the investment of your time and energy and just doing something that you really enjoy doing. And so learning how to, to just pull away emotionally when, when you have a challenge, uh, when, when something's not working and, and just focus objectively on solving things. That's a, that's a real skill I think that I've been trying to learn my whole life. Dr. Pipe, it's so valuable for us to know that in terms of going for the change that we want, it's going to be difficult and we're going to have performance barriers that show up. But what I really value about what you said is that let's talk about that emotional investment. We would call that emotional management. And to be able to be a champion for change, you have to really love what you're doing. You've got to put all this emotion and passion into it. And that's why it's so difficult to really separate that when it doesn't go our way, when we separate it from ourselves versus the project or the performance barrier. So share with us some winning strategies that you have for managing your emotional investment. Sure. Um, yeah, that's a hard one. And, and, and honestly, this is, um, this is, this is, these are things that I continually work on um, personally. I, so Again, a lot of it has to do with when, when you when you run into challenges when things aren't working. Um, see these as learning opportunities, um, and and also keep perspective. You know, in, in the end, is what is is this solution? Is is this the most important thing going on in my world? You know, I have relationships. I've got family and friends that that are important. So keeping a perspective on the importance of this work, even though you put so much of your life and time in it. 
is a is a is a real skill uh, that I continually work on. Um, but but also it it's you know failure sometimes leads to new success. So so one thing I can say, uh, you know, a good thing that I remember is the this propeller method that Emily talked about at the beginning. Actually, when I first came up with propeller, I was trying to solve a completely different problem. Um, and I spent uh, several weeks trying to solve this different problem, and and I, I had this this meth this propeller method kind of invented to solve problem A. Uh, it wasn't working, and then all of a sudden it struck me. You know what? This is actually a great way to look at patient motion and to solve for that instead. So I took the, the things that I had been working on. Uh, and I just refocused how I was applying them. And I saw that actually now, now there's a new way where, where all of this time and work I've put in can actually be really useful in a slightly different direction. So, um, you know, it's, it's trying, trying to stay objective, um, trying, to, trying to just think broadly. A lot of times I think putting things away for a while is really helpful to me. So when I have a problem, Sometimes, and I just can't figure it out. Um, what I what I do is rather than focus on the solution, I, f I think about the problem itself. I really drill down onto what needs to be changed or what do I need to solve without thinking, trying to think about how I solve it. And then, you know, I do something else. And then uh, two weeks later, when I'm out on a run or in the middle of the night, the answer to that often comes to me or, or not. But um, it's it's. When, when, if you don't just spin your wheels on something where you're emotionally frustrated and, and in a place where you cannot be effective, if you figure out how to withdraw from that, that emotional pit and just um, find other things to do, and I, I think it's it's a it's it, yeah I, I can't explain it well, but this is this is <laughs> you're doing you're doing a great job. The tool that we use for that, Dr. Pipe, is called our three dimensional life. And we're committed to really living in three dimensions, personal, professional, and philanthropic. And you just described the value of that beautifully because professionally, we dive in and we give it our heart and soul and we're committed to it. And really that professional brain of ours is running 24 seven on the passion of solving the problems that we're interested in. And if we abandon our personal life, we really are not great professionally. So what I, heard in your dialogue of really a winning strategy is that go for what you love professionally. If you hit a performance barrier, take a joy break, go enjoy your family, switch into your personal dimension, and have some fun with some family and friends. We talk about so much the value of relationships and the power of team and really having that team that is anchored with you in the good and the bad. So instead of working really hard professionally, getting a performance barrier to show up and bringing that performance barrier home and then telling, you know, everyone in your personal life about that and, and bringing that, we want to actually challenge us to have a three dimension and to divide that and to say, professionally, I'm just going to leave this at the office. I've worked it. I'm going to go home. I'm going to exercise. I'm going to laugh. I'm going to have fun. I'm going to enjoy my friends and my family. And I'm going to trust the process that it's going to come to me when I can relax a bit. And even having another dimension, that philanthropic com component, sometimes really being able to practice with giving hope and just forgetting about who we are and the problems that we're trying to solve and all the big things that are going on to just walk out and to give hope to someone and engage in a simple conversation. It can really be that action to change. Dr. Pipe, I have a question for you. I loved in your bio reading about the kind of the heart behind the why that you're doing things. And really it's for patient care and to help them get to a more accurate diagnosis quicker. Talk to me about how that fuels you um, when you, you know, run into performance bears or just, you know, when you wake up in the morning and you got to get to work. And I know sometimes maybe this, you can't relate, but I'm hoping that you can. Sometimes it's like, wow, I got to do the day all over again. So I'm going to need something to motivate me you know, outside of just kind of the grind of, you know, going to a job of, I mean, hopefully we want to love it, but if we're not grounded in something that's kind of bigger. So, you know, I heard you talk about that emotional management piece and you kind of setting it off to the side at times, but how does putting it in the forefront of your mind help you as it relates to really trying to solve some really tough and big, big things in your world? 
Sure. Uh, that's a, that's a, we continually, or I continually refine my, my, my overall strategies based on, on this concept of, of patient care. And I'll say, I'll say in the, in the field of MR development. Um, so I've had some leadership roles in our, in our societies. And I really, um, as I, as I've, as I've been in that role, I really started to stress the concept of value in, in MRI. So, um, and, and this is kind of outside of my professional life, but as you just look at the news and you look at the cost of healthcare and, and how this continually is going up at an unsustainable rate, you know, this is a personal concern of mine where I see that I can actually make a professional difference. So I think that this this perception of, of, of health care costs and where things are going and how are we going to address this has, has really been a big driver for me. And then if you look at a lot of the things that we need to do, you know, the, so, so health care costs, that's a huge issue and certainly nothing I'm going to be able to, to tackle on my own, but I can do what I can. Um, and, and part of doing what I can in this field is, is looking at how when someone comes in for their MR exam, are we going to get them through the exam as fast and efficiently as possible? But really importantly, how do we get them to the best treatment for the best outcome as quickly as possible? That's not only good for healthcare costs, but that's also really good for the patient. So this is a kind of a dual win. And, 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 and this has been something that we focused on a lot is um, just not just getting a good MR scan, but how does this link into the treatment and the whole process downstream? Um, and, and this is one of the great things about coming here to Mayo is that they Mayo, um, Mayo lives and breathes the concept that the needs of the patient come first. And so everywhere you go, when you talk about this, um, people understand this and people really like to talk about how what we are all doing fits together to, to bring the needs of the patient to get them to the best treatment for the best outcome right away. That is so great. And that reminds me of even just on being on a college team or being in a family. If you have a common goal, kind of like what you're talking about, if everyone's focused on patient care, then you're all going to get to sort of that. It's going to be that same driving force. You you know where you're going. So your roadmap can look appropriate, right? For where you want to head. So I think that is a beautiful design. Yeah. Also, what do you think about the qualities and characteristics you want in your teammates, Dr. Pipe. I hear you say you've been on a leadership board and, you know, you have teams of people that you're working with um, as you do this healthcare work. What do you value? Sure. Uh, so, so they have to be smart. That's a given and, and good, good at engineering, but there are a lot of people like that. Really, really what I have come to value uh, are people that work well together, that can think that can be independent and work on their own, but that also are really good, really good at being part of a team and, and helping each other out. Um, I, I think building trust, I mean, just like in personal relationships, I think in, in, in our group relationships, trust is such a fundamental thing. And if you don't have that, you can't move forward. But if you really build that deeply, I think it, it enables everything we do. So people, when I, when I bring in, people to interview to join our team um you know of course i, I want people who think differently i want a, a variety of different perspectives and, and thoughts but i think at the core they have to be someone who i would just have fun working with and who i would really enjoy working with one time i'll say the, the last time i did this I, I had a person come in a very nice guy he was but he was very much of a he challenged people all the time. And I thought to myself, this is going to be good. This is going to really help my team to have someone who challenges what we do so we don't, we don't fall into um, this trap of thinking that what we're doing is right. And uh, maybe there's something to that. But in the end, what I found was he, he no one wanted to work with him. That It was easiest just to kind of leave him in the corner. And it wasn't good for him and it wasn't good for us. So I, I've really... Um, yeah, I, building trust, finding people that you you love to work with, um, is, is is in my opinion far more important than finding the most brilliant person that maybe isn't able to work with the team as a whole. Dr. Pai, that is a great model for us with the power of team. And team, I'm just going to challenge you this week to really practice 
being a great teammate, both personally, professionally, philanthropically. You heard from Dr. Pipe that we all have our talents, we all have our gifts, and we're all in different careers, whether it's your dream career or your dream partner personally, whatever's going on in your life right now. The change that I wanna challenge you for this week is let's start with ourselves. And let's do the things that we have total control over. Think about the things you want to change, the new thinking, the new skills, and the new hope. And the new skill that I want you to practice this week is to be a great teammate. How fun to really hear that being a great teammate means that somebody can trust you, they can have fun with you, and that you'll get your job done. And you're part of a team. So we know that philanthropically, one of our fundamentals is playing a small role in something so much bigger than ourselves. And Dr. Pipe just demonstrated that in a beautiful way of how he is doing his part. He's collectively putting a team together that's committed to a purpose so much bigger than anything he can do, but he's playing a small role in something that's going to help all of us. So team, today's been all about change and it's all been about the power of team You've heard the power of relationships, and you've gotten to really take a journey with Dr. Pipe on hearing someone say there's a performance barrier and him coming up with the action to change. And with the skill of patience, 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 practicing, learning from his mistakes and going for what really matters to him, that purpose and love equals change. Thank you so much, Dr. Pipe, for being here with us. I am inspired by your story and appreciate your heart to care for humanity by caring about healthcare and by choosing to be a solution to the problem. I think that's something that we can all learn from. If we are willing to be a part of the solution, then I think the world is going to be a better place. Carlette, thank you so much for the great workout. So team, it's time to practice, practice, practice. So go out and work on change management this week. Think about Dr. Pipe and his inspiring story about how he took an idea, invented something, and he's committed to playing a small role in something so much bigger than himself. Thank you for listening. Don't forget, tune in next week and head over to iTunes and Spotify and hit subscribe. Remember, a championship life is a 10 life. You matter. Your life matters. Create a life that you love. Give hope to others and be and choose nothing but 10s. Be you. The world needs you. Go to lifetrainingacademy.com.